All right, so for these problems, one, you had to be able to first identify what your slope and y-intercept is, and then to graph it, you might have needed to also put it as the equation that we're used to seeing. And from here, what I'm mainly focused on with this is, can you graph the scenario properly? Meaning that, are you interpreting what's happening here and what would make sense and not make sense in a graph? So I'm going to go over all the questions, so the two questions here. So our equation that we've been graphing is y is equal to mx plus b. So it's seeing, can you identify what your b, your y-intercept, and what your slope is? So we know our y-intercept is b, and we know our slope is m. Well, our slope is the rate of change. So we know it's change in y over change in x or rise over run. And when we see $1 per mile, that's saying that we're traveling $1 for every one mile. So that's telling us it is a rate of change when we see that per mile. And since it's one, our, we know our slope is equal to one. And then our B, when we're graphing it, we were learning it like in layman's term, meaning just like without necessarily like the mathematical term of it, it's our starting point when we're graphing. Well, here it says the cost of service is $10 plus $1 every mile. So if our starting, our cost of service is $10 and then we're adding more money to it, that $10 is our starting point, meaning that when we call this tow truck and if they're going to come out to us, no matter what, we're being charged 10 bucks. No matter how far or how short we're going, it's $10 and then we're getting charged a dollar every mile. So that's our starting point. So then if I were to write this as an equation, y is equal to 1x plus 10. We don't have to write the 1 in front of the x. You could have just wrote uh, x. And now it's saying, given the scenario, labor axis and graph. So in this case, then, our x is our independent variable. So if we think about independent variable is miles or is dollars are independent. Well, our miles are our independent variable. So we would have to label that x axis as miles. And then our y axis, I'm going to label as total cost, because that's how much we're going to pay depending on the miles. All right, then from here, I'm going to um, now think, so my equation, I'll write it again, y is equal to 1x plus 10. So I'm counting, I need to go to 10 for my y axis. So if I try to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, it's going to be really hard for me to write that 10 out. So this is testing, can we manipulate our graphs? So instead of counting by ones, I'm going to count by two. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. And now I don't need to do anything in the negative axis of Y because we can't have a negative $2 cost or negative $4 cost. It'll be nice, but we can't. So I don't have to even worry about doing anything here. So I can cross that out if I want. And then for my Y axis, I am going to count by ones. If you want to count by twos, you can, but I'm just going to count by ones because it's $1 per mile. So I know I'm traveling as ones. If you want to, since we know our slope simplify to one, maybe you do want to do two over two to keep as one. It's up to you. Um, but I'm going to do it as one. So this way, when I graph it, I can explain something to you again. And same thing, we can't travel in negative miles. Distance is always positive. So I don't need to worry about that. So what this question C is testing is, are you able to identify that here, the only part of our graph can be in this quadrant one, because we can't have a negative miles or a negative cost. So the graph can't go anywhere beyond that. So we know our B is equal to 10. We know our slope is equal to one. So I know my starting point here is at 10. And now what we need to be mindful of, and this is one reasons why I did this, is because on the last test, you guys were counting properly, but not looking at what our axis is. So we need our change in Y over change in X to be equal to one, because that's our slope. But I made every single Y when we move up one to be equal to two. So when I count up one, it's not actually going up one, it's going up two. So that means in order for this to still be equal to one, I need my change in X to be two. But since I count it by ones, I need to move two to the right. So one, two, so there will be my next point in order for it to maintain a slope of one. So I'm just making sure that you guys are, are aware that, yeah, we're counting up one and counting over two, but because our axis we're counting by two for Y and counting by one for X, it's still a two over two slope. So one, so then you would use a straight edge. I can't when I'm doing it on this computer. Uh, so then that will be our graph. So what I was looking for is do you guys realize, one, that you um, don't graph anything in the um, any of these negative axes? So this is the only way our graph looks. It stops at this y-axis, and it does go to infinity because we can travel 
um, way more miles than five. I mean, obviously infinity doesn't work, but we still put the arrow there. Um, but this is what I was looking for is one, are you guys able to understand that our graph only is in quadrant one? Cause some of you are making that mistake, um, because this actually has a context to the problem and we can't have negative miles or we can't have negative total costs. So that's the way our graph has to look. And the reason why I counted by twos and I didn't count by twos here was specifically because that was also another mistake you guys are making on your test that even though I went up one, that up one accounts for two of my change in Y because it goes from 10 to 12. And then here, since I'm counting by ones and my X's, I still need to count over two to get that two change uh, for my um, change in X. All right. So that was why I did mine. You can you can do your graphs differently. It doesn't need to be identical to this, but just needs to be the same um, characteristics. All right. Let's go over the next question. All right. So for this one, same thing. We have Y is equal to MX plus B. We know our B is equal to our Y intercept and we know our M is equal to our slope. So it's what we have to identify with this first before we can go ahead and graph. Well, it says a cost of service is $50 for him just to show up. So that's our initial value. That is our Y intercept. So no matter what, this plumber is charging us $50. Even if they just come out and say, actually, there is no issue, they're still going to charge you $50 for making them come out there. If they stay for 10 hours, it's $50, and then it's going to be charged for every hour as well. So this is our initial fee, our initial cost, our initial point. Our slope is how much we're changing our rate of change. Well, this is per hour. So it's dollar over hour. So we know that that is our rate of change. So it's $25 that they're charging for every hour. So now we know Y is equal to 25X plus 50. All right. So now I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to rewrite this uh, Y equals 25X plus 50. So I see that my numbers are 25 and 50. I could count by fives if I want to, but... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to be hard for me to get to 50. I need to get to 10 just to get to 50. And then I need another five more on top of that to do my slope of 25 if I'm counting by fives. So I'm just going to count by 25. Since both of those numbers are divisible by 25, that's what I'm choosing. You can do it in a different way if you want. You do not have to do by 25s. Just because I say that's what I'm doing, you have freedom. And then for my slope, I know it's 25 over one. So since each tick mark counting up is 25, that is telling me that I should and will be counting by ones. Because if I do anything else, it's going to be really hard for me to um, uh, figure out kind of what I need to do. And numbers might not be on these uh, tick marks. It might be in between. So since I need to be 25 over one and my change in Y is going by 25, it's just easier to make my change in X to go by ones. Same thing. I don't need to worry about any negative numbers because we can't have negative hours worked and we can't have negative money that we're, that the plumber's charging us. So our B we know is 50. That is our starting point. So I'll put 50 and our slope was 25. So I'm going up 25 and over one, but because we're counting by 25s on our Y, I just need to go up one and over one. Cause as I go up one, that's 25 and then over one, that is one and 25 over one is 25. So it's up one over one, up one over one. And then you'll use your straight edge and you'll draw your line uh, going through your points. And there is our graph. Same thing. What I was looking for for this question is a few things. But the main thing is, do you know how to manipulate your, your axes? And do you know that our graph isn't negative in here because we now have a context to the problem? All right. And then the last thing that we need to do is label our axes. So here will be our total costs because that's how much we're paying for the plumber. And here we can say hours or hours worked. Uh, just make sure that you're labeling it for the hours. All right, so that is it for those two questions.